What's up guys, my name is Justin from justicegood.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create an outlined pop art effect. So this effect works great on any objects or people that you want to highlight in your photo and it would be cool for a flyer or poster design. So the first thing you want to do is create your selection. For this technique we don't need the absolute most accurate selection so what we're going to do actually is head over to our lasso menu and then select the magnetic lasso tool. Here you want to set the settings to about 10 pixels width, 10% contrast, and a frequency of about 75. At this point you can click and start on any part of your object and then if you just follow the path that you're trying to cut out, Photoshop will automatically help you out and add points along the way. Also you can click on points yourself and add your own points. So it's kind of like a team effort. You can click along the way if Photoshop is having a hard time distinguishing an edge, but just closely follow your path all the way around. Once we get to the bottom, you actually can't click outside of the uh, outside of the canvas. So when you're dragging along the bottom of your object, you might see some gaps, but don't worry, we'll fix that afterwards. So just keep on going and just team up with Photoshop along the way. So now um, you see those few spaces on the bottom that Photoshop wasn't able to see and that one spot where I messed up. If we actually just grab our polygonal lasso tool and set it to add to selection mode here, we can click inside our selection and then kind of make some patches and patch up the parts that we want to. So this edge here, we're kind of patching up some spots. So there we go. So we've got our selection. We've patched it up where we need to. And the next step is to go to refine edge. So here you can kind of see your selection against a black or white background and you can adjust the edge of it. One thing I'm going to say is not to use edge detection because it's going to create a problem later. All you want to do is kind of smooth the selection here and then increase the contrast as well. Don't use feather and don't use the edge of detection. Um, just use the shift edge, smooth and feather to kind of clean up some spots. So go ahead and select OK. Now we've got our final selection here. Um, it's OK that it's not perfect the kind of hand cut out look is what we're looking for. Now right click and layer via copy. So now we've got our selection on its own layer and we're ready to work on the bulk of this effect. So at this point you could move your object onto a new canvas or we can actually just adjust the canvas we're working on um, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to head over to my crop tool and I'm just going to kind of open up the canvas to something that I want to work with something like that. Let's imagine it was an advertisement or a poster or something. And go ahead and select enter. And then we want to create a new background layer. So I'm going to go ahead and go to layer, new fill layer. And you can make the background anything you want, but I'm just going to use a solid color for the sake of this tutorial. So the color I'm going to use is kind of like a dark bluish navy. And the color code for mine is 001C4D. So now we've got our blank background and we've got our object cut out. This is a great starting point for any effect. And we're going to right click on our layer and oops, we're going to right click on the layer and duplicate that layer. So now we're actually going to create a clipping mask by using option command G or you can find that under layer create clipping mask. So on this clipping masked layer, we're going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. This is going to look cool because the image is going to look a little bit out of focus, but the repeating strokes are going to look in focus. So that's why we're doing it. So I'm going to use a radius of about three pixels. And then I'm also going to go to image adjustments levels. And I'm going to inch the sliders in a little bit, kind of squeeze them together to give our photo a little bit more contrast. Don't go too overboard. 
So go ahead and select OK. And then lastly, I'm going to go to Image Adjustments Photo Filter. And I'm going to use Red. And I'm going to have Preserve Luminosity unchecked. And I'm going to turn the density all the way up to 100. So you can use Red or Photoshop as Deep Red. One of them is a little bit brighter. But let's stick with Red. So now we've kind of got our effect in place and we want to click back on our original layer here and then go to right click blending options and add your first stroke so under the stroke we want to have the color set to white and the size I'm gonna use three but it's kind of your preference uh, let's actually do four let's do four and leave the position inside and the opacity at 100 percent so go ahead and select OK and you see that's why we didn't need the most exact selection because the jagged edges kind of get covered up. And then you can see that it, since we used inside stroke, it created this line right here. But we can fix that by holding shift, selecting both of our layers here to move them together. That way nothing gets out of sync. And then grabbing our move tool and hitting the down arrow key about four or five times. Now here's where we're going to create the repeating stroke effect and we're actually going to use our own Photoshop action to do this. So first of all, let's click on our very top layer and then go to layer, new layer, and we'll call this one stroke. So we have our blank layer on top and this is what we're going to be adding that final stroke onto. And then if you hold command and you actually click on your original cutout, Photoshop will give you a selection of everything on that layer. So it kind of gives our selection or gives us our selection again. And then if you go to window and you open the actions panel, we're going to create or record our own action. So hit this button right here. It's a uh, for a new action and we'll call this stroke effect and then select record. So now the red button is on and Photoshop is recording everything you do. So since we have our layer selected and our selection active, what we're actually going to do is go to select, modify, and we're going to go to expand. So we're going to expand our selection and this is totally preference on how close or far you want the lines to be, but I'll use 15 pixels and then select OK. And then we're also going to go to select, modify, smooth and I'll use 10 pixels and then I'm gonna go to right click oops make sure you have uh, any selection tool active go to right click stroke and color you can use any color you want but I'm gonna use white because I think that looks nice and you can use one or two pixels I'm gonna use two pixels for this tutorial and location let's use outside so go ahead and select OK and then go back to window actions so open up your actions panel again and click the pause button so we're done recording that effect so as you can see within this effect we have the expand smooth and stroke so with our selection still active here on the new layer go ahead and click your stroke effect action and then press the play button so as you can see every time we play it it does the action so it saves us a lot of time rather than doing those three steps over and over and over um, I'm just gonna keep clicking the play button until I reach the end or edge of my selection and get creative with this you can change the width in between you can change the pixels you can change the amount it smooths these are just my first presets that I'm showing you. So once you reach the end of the selection, you can see it's all on this one new layer. You can right click and deselect. And then we're actually gonna go to layer, layer mask, and we're gonna go to reveal all. And we're gonna kind of mask out the edges here. So one way to do it is to grab your gradient tool, use your normal black to white gradient, and then I like to use this radial one here, set the mode to normal, and then you can click and drag from your object. 
make sure it's going white to black actually so you can check reverse if it does that and you can do something like this so that only parts of that stroke show so that's the final effect i think it looks really cool and interesting and there's a lot of different ways you can take it now that you have the basic tools on how to make it if you did enjoy this tutorial make sure you follow me on facebook instagram and twitter my username on all of them is just this good and i always post sneak peeks of upcoming videos and also make sure you subscribe to me here on youtube to be notified every time i upload a video you can find the free psd for this video available for download at my website justasgood.com i'll leave a link below and once again thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time